for the Eagles. Zach. Oh, no, no. That's good call and good execution. Big first down. Right through the wickets. Hello and welcome to week one of High School Game Night. I'm Jackie Franchuli and that's Brian Cass. And Brian, it's hard to believe that football is back. You know I get pumped up for this, Jackie. Uh, so many great storylines this year. Can't wait to see how they all play out. That's right, Brian. And one of those storylines is the return of a neighborly rivalry game this year with Warwick and Mannheim Central backyard brawling once again. Warwick finally as healthy as they could hope for. Uh, Mannheim Central has high expectations this year, but throw out all that pregame hype. Finally, time to get down to business and settle this one on the field. Barron's head coach, Mike Williams, beginning his 32nd year in charge. But it's Warwick, new QB, Zach Hurst, making some noise early. Slings it to Austin Myers. Easy pitch and catch. Game tied at seven. Central would score, but Warwick responds again in the second. And again, it's Austin Myers. What a catch. He hangs on for the TD. Extra point, no good. And in the second half, Mannheim Central goes bananas. Mark Royer gets the handoff. Nice cutback inside. Rumbles into the end zone. Barron's up by eight. And then it's Colin Fry, junior quarterback for Mannheim. Rolls left and finds his tight end, Taylor Guy. Open in the end zone for the score. And that would ice it. Central wins 41-13 after a dominant second half performance. And sideline reporter Shannon Miscavige caught up with the team after the game. quarterback taking over the Barons. How do you feel about your performance tonight? Um, felt really good. I mean, I got a little, I got to give a lot of credit to the guys. I mean, the defense got me the ball, the line protected me, and the backs ran them through the holes, the receivers made the catch. So it was a team effort tonight. Yeah. Awesome to hear. Ian Hanselman next up. Yeah, Ian, a lot of success on the field tonight. Who do you credit? Thank you. Uh, I just want to shout out to the line for uh, blocking for me all night and uh, also the coaches, they worked with us all season, so they're the reason we're here and in this place I'm feeling great. Awesome, excellent recognition of the team. Congrats on the win, guys. Let's send it back to the studio. Jackie? Thanks, Shannon. The Barons do look like they mean business this year. Well, Cocalco is one team looking to give Mannheim Central a run for its money for the section title. Last season, they had 20 holes to fill because of graduation. This season is a whole different story with 16 returners, including two electrify on tailback. Spencer Moser and Nick Reidenbach looking to put the moves on Daniel Boone's defense on opening night. The Eagles not wasting any time. Up six to nothing in the first and here comes Moser. He weaves in and out of traffic. No stroke grabbing is stopping him. Moser with a nice gain on that plane, which sets up this. Third and goal for Cocalco. Brock Gosling leaps over to inch his way inside the end zone. Eagles up 12 to nothing. Cocalico is flying and Eagles Stadium is rocking. Second quarter we go. Jet Janice in for Gosling, but he doesn't change who he hands it off to. Moser once again wrecking havoc. The running back with a 32 yard dash to the end zone. The Eagles get the extra point this time, 19 to zero. That's how the first half would end. Cocalico defense was the big story that half, not giving the Blazers an inch. The Cocalico Eagles wins this one in blow-up fashion, 40-7. to Oh, that was some nice work out there filming that Veer offense, Jackie. <laughs> and coming up, it's another Section 2 squad that relies on the Veer. The new-look effort amounts are next on High School Game Night. Ponzo Pizza in Ephrata. <laughs> Gives to Anthony Brown, cuts back across the green. Anthony Brown into the open field. Anthony Brown, touchdown. Inside the 10-yard line, it is Anthony Brown going straight ahead. Hurdles a defender into the end zone for a touchdown.
Such a sensational year last season for Conestoga Valley's Anthony Brown as a junior, and the Buckskin is back on the field as a senior, ready to replicate his success. And I'll have some help this year from this man, quarterback Ryan Brooks. And in the first quarter opening drive, Brooks finds his workhorse, Anthony Brown, and the wheels begin to roll, sidesteps the tackle. Brown with a 22-yard run all the way to touchdown land. CV up 7-0. Cedarcliff with quite a comeback though, leading 14 to seven now. And Andrew Ford dishes to Yusef Ajlane, and it's off to the races. Colts with 21 unanswered points. The Buckskins though, not out of it yet. The snap on the punt goes way over the punter's head. Mass confusion ensues, and senior Tyler Petrie says, thank you very much, snatches up the ball. And who knew the linebacker had that kind of speed? Touchdown, Bucks, 21-14, but Cedar Cliff Turns on the air assault after that. Lots of offense in this one. Colts win 55-27. Newcomers to the Section 2 scene. The new look Ephraim Mounts looking to inspire some pride in the yellow and purple this season. Yeah, it's been a rough couple years for those Mounts. Only three wins in two years, you know. But new coach Scott Shelley and his squad trying to win some respect this season. But things not going as planned in the early goings. Exeter on a mission to spoil the Mounts party. Darian Ensing rolls into the end zone and the Eagles up 7-0 in the first. Things continue to go downhill for the Mounts down 21-0. This time Kyle Joachim decides to lob it up in the air, finds his target man Robbie Devitt all by himself. F Exeter up 28-2 zip. Exeter would go on to win 42 to nothing. The rebuilding process for Ephra will continue though next week against Garden Spot. Oh, and speaking of those Spartans in New Holland tonight, Garden Spot beginning anew after the loss of offensive tandem quarterback John Armbrust and wideout Connor Schlegel. But there's some good news. Running back Adam Haas returns after missing last year due to injury, and he looks ready to absolutely punish defenses. Haas getting ready to go to work. Bring your hard hats and lunch pails, but it's his brother Austin on the opening kickoff, busting it down the right sideline, evading defenders. Ends up past midfield. Garden Spot is in business. Same drive. Here's Adam Oz, the man of the hour, on fourth and four, grinding out the yardage, takes it down to the seven yard line. Sets up this new quarterback, Mitch Martin, just a sophomore. But look at these moves. Pump fake, slips a defender, and he pulls his way head first into the end zone. Spartans take the early seven to nothing lead, and the defense takes care of the rest. Matt Martin zooms in like a homing missile for the tackle. Garden Spot starts the season with a win 27 to 6. Twin Valley not prepared for the physicality of those Spartans. But don't go anywhere. We've only scratched the surface. So many other contests to check on in week one. We'll go around the LL League and we have lots of scores to pass along. High School Game Night continues next. JD's Pazzo Pizza in Ephrata. Thank you to the lovely Ephrata cheerleaders there. It's hard to believe it, but we're still in the home stretch of our week one high school game night. Let's check in on some scores from around the league. First up, we check in on two defending state champs. Quad A champs Central Dolphin take down Mannheim Township 21 to seven and Lancaster Catholic beats Dallas Town 41 to 33. Historic night for Catholic running back Roman Clay. 22 carries for 442 yards and six touchdowns. What a guy. Brian, he's already a third of its way from what he did oh, last crazy. year. From state champs to district champs, single weight champs, Columbia win a shootout with Eastern York 52 to 36. In section three, hopeful Donegal beats Elizabethtown 42 to 12. And a couple of section one powerhouses in action. Wilson over Governor Mifflin 21 nothing. And Penn Manor over Solanco 48 to nothing. Elsewhere, new coach Bob Miller's debut in Elko ends great for him. 44 to six, they beat Hamburg. Anvil Cleona beats Tri-Valley 28-13. Northern Lebanon wins 26-12 over Pine Grove from District 11. And Peckway Valley takes down York Tech 45-16. To the Cedar Bow in Lebanon. Cedar Crest blows out Lebanon 67 to nothing. Penfield beats LS 28-21 in this all-LL brawl. That is an upset. And of course, my alma mater, McCaskey, they lose a close one 23-20 to Redding. 
And don't forget to head to our blog later on tonight and over the weekend to vote for the play of the week. We'll have all your choices up by midnight tonight. Leave it open through Wednesday. There will be a poll on the right sidebar at news11sports.blogspot.com. Um, and it's never too early to think about next week's game. We head to the war with Ephrata hosting Garden Scott. It should be an interesting matchup with the Spartans out to prove they should be in Section 2 while the Mounds still looking to pro prove doubters wrong. Kickoff is set at 7. Oh, it might be week one, Jackie, but the non-league games, it's still serious business out there. That's right. You know, it's great to be back. This is called a rap, Brian. I'm Jackie Franchuli. That's Brian Cast. Have a good night, guys.